In this recording, we're going to move through our two-dimensional array that we used in our nesting loops conversation, and we're going to make a logical assessment on each value. Again, predicated on this information right here, we have four pressure sensors making six recordings a day, and if one of those recordings is above 400 PSI, each one being in PSI, we're going to display the following warning. Warning sensor number has recorded a pressure of some PSI in its recording number of the day. So the interesting part about that is that at the end of our last video, we had stepped through an entire array. We have, for one to the number of rows, for one to the number of columns, we built a temporary string where we combined everything into string data. So we took all of our numeric data. This would be one, this would be two, this would be three. We went num to string, or we used the num to string function to turn those into strings so that we could combine everything, and then we displayed that single array. Okay, so now what we want to do is, before we display anything, we want to see if we have to display something. But the first thing we're going to do is this. What happens if my array gets bigger? So, up above, I'm going to have the number of rows and the number of columns. Again, we're abstracting everything out. Now, in order to compute the number of rows, I need to use a function called size. I can come to the command window, I can type help space size, and help gives me all of the information on how to use this function. Now, reading the help files can be pretty taxing. Right down here, there's a sequence of examples, uh, usually, and D equals size of X, M1, M2, M3 equals the size of X, M and N equals the size of X, M, N2, and this is kind of what it is that we're after, where we want to go after one dimension at a time. And that actually looks like, where is it? Here we go, size of X comma dimension, returns the length of the dimension specified by the scalar dim. For example, size x comma 1 returns the number of rows, which means size of x comma 2 returns the number of columns. So then we're going to say the size of pressures comma 1, that's my number of rows, and because I want to be lazy but in a good way, I'm going to copy that and paste it right down below, but for the number of columns, it's not size of pressures comma 1, it's size of pressures comma 2. So instead of 4, I would like from 1 to the number of rows. And instead of six, I would like from one to the number of columns. Now, this is a little more abstract piece of code. We could change this pressures array, and we, our looping structure would change automatically. So this is where we're finally attacking the virtue of using loops to move through a data set. Now, I also said that somewhere in here, before we display information, we want to determine if we have to display information. And to do that, again, all predicated on the assumption that if we encounter a pressure above 400 PSI, we want to display a warning. If we encounter a pressure below 400 PSI, this tells us we don't really have to do anything. So we're going to start with that assumption. Now, this I'm going to indent because down here I'm going to say, look, if pressures at I comma J we talked about what that meant, row i comma j, because we're working row by row and column by column. So if pressures at i comma j greater than 400, then we're going to build a temp string, and all of this basically goes away. Okay, so we need to build a new string. And we need to say, I'm, first I'm going to start with this entire thing. I'm just going to copy this, and then I'm going to paste it right here. I don't know why it did that, so let's again copy, paste, there we go. I want it all to be on one line and none of it to be commented out. Let's see, we're going to encounter a number here, so that will be the end of a first part of a string. We'll have some number, so comma, and then we'll keep going with our string. Because we're going to say warning sensor number has recorded a pressure of, we're done with a part of the string. And then we want PSI in recording, not it's recording. Well, we'll go ahead and get rid of it's because it's not a person. Um, in recording blank, again, a number of the day. Okay, so we have a string. We need to get rid of all of this information, but we need to know what sensor, a pressure, and what recording of the day. Well, the sensor is the row number 
right? And the row number, when we step through, is being manipulated by i. i is the control variable that changes from 1 to 2 to 3 to 4 because we only have four sensors. So here we're going to say num to string i. Okay, has recorded a pressure of, well, we're going to have to use some uh, numeric data, so we'll have to turn that number into a string. The numeric data we're going to be using is, again, pressures at i, comma j. So I'm going to copy that and paste it right here. And then PSI in recording blank of the day, the columns are the blanks, so we're going to have again some numeric data, num to string, but since we're moving column by column and we want to know what column we're in when we encounter this uh, value and pressures at i comma j, we're just going to use j, so here we go. Now, the only thing I'm missing here is an end, and now I have one four, a second four, now an if, which is why I now have one, two, three end statements. The first goes with the if, so we have a logic block. The second goes with the interior for loop, and the third end goes with the third, I'm sorry, the second, or the outer for loop. Now let's go ahead and run this. We start with clear and CLC. We're gonna lose all of our help information, but we just wanna look, take a look at what happens. Now we noted one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We should have eight statements. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And it should be 489, 550, 558, 454, 498, 452, 468, and 560, which is the exact order that they appear right here. So now, we can move through an array, element by element, make a logical assessment on that element, and execute some action based on the outcome of that assessment. Now the assessment can be whatever we want. It can even be compound. If the pressures are greater than 400 and something else is true, or something else is true, or some sort of more complex logic. And if that's true, we can display some sort of warning. But this is how we utilize nested loops and logic to move through an array, to make an assessment on the data in the array, and we can use it in calculations or we can simply display some message. So in a future example, we'll be using this information in calculations to do several different things. Um, but until then, just focus on this. I would urge you to work with this, change values in arrays, change the context of the example, change the output, um, play with this. You can use this as a construct and, and you know, just change a few things. But uh, yeah, till next time.